Hi folks, my name's Jem, I'm the Crazy Pigeon Lady and it's my mission to entertain, educate and inspire people with all things pigeon and dove. Welcome back to this, my beginner's guide to keeping pigeons as pets. Uh, and in this episode four, I will be talking about feeding and nutrition. For the purpose of this series, it's assumed that you're keeping the rock dove or domestic uh, pigeon, the species Columba livia, although much of the advice I give here will be relevant to other small dove species kept as pets. Also, what these species have in common is that they are all granivorous, that is, they are grain on seed eating. So it's presumed for the purpose of this series that you're not keeping exotic pigeons that have a fruit based diet. First of all, I want to cover the very basics of the nutritional food groups that form the cornerstone of any pigeon or dove diet. And in that diet, there are three main food groups, proteins, carbohydrates and fats. Proteins are important for growth, uh, cell regeneration, building up the organs, building feathers and for pigeon milk if those birds are feeding babies and proteins are provided uh, generally by peas in the diet and most pigeon mixtures will come with a variety of peas of which there are different kinds and different sizes. The second main food group is carbohydrates and carbohydrates provide energy uh, to the bird's muscles that they need to fly and to exercise and just to power them in general day-to-day -day life. And carbohydrates are generally provided by different sorts of grains and cereals, wheats, rice, oats, that kind of thing. The third and final food group that forms the mainstay of a pigeon's diet is fats. Now, fats are a source of energy. In fact, they provide twice as much energy as carbohydrates, but they're also important for the organs uh, and also for the uh, feathers, particularly the production of oils uh, for keeping the feathers waterproof and in good condition. Fats are provided by various different types of fatty seeds, uh, which are generally included in a basic pigeon mix. So when selecting the food to feed your pigeons, it's important to select a mix that includes a balance uh, in the appropriate ratios of proteins, carbohydrates and fats. It's less important what kind of brand of pigeon feed that you get or necessarily the specific constituent parts in it, as long as it is providing a balanced mix of those appropriate food groups. And perhaps you might want to try different types of brands out there, which come in a whole range of different types of mixes and also a varying range of expense as well. Although you will generally find that cheaper mixes generally have fewer different types of grain, seeds and peas and more expensive mixes will contain more variety. Uh, your birds might be quite picky uh, or they might be quite flexible and so I recommend that you try different type of pigeon mixes until you find something that your birds are happy with. If you've got doves particularly quite small doves, uh, then you might want to buy a specialist mix that consists of grains that are smaller. Their essential needs, nutritionally speaking, are the same. However, they do have smaller, daintier beaks and therefore they might find it more difficult to swallow some of the larger peas and grains that you might find in a pigeon mix. Therefore, it might be appropriate to buy them a mix that's specifically designed for doves. So it means that all the constituent pieces included in the feed will be smaller and therefore much easier for the doves to pick up and to digest. In addition to the macronutrients of, of protein, carbohydrates and fats, uh, those foods will also supply a certain degree of vitamins and minerals too. Although birds that live indoors won't necessarily get the opportunity to get a, as enriching a diet as perhaps wild birds would if they were foraging in the outside. And therefore, if you're keeping birds indoors as pets, it's important to supplement the food that you give them with appropriate additional vitamins and minerals to ensure that they're not missing out on all the nutrition that they need in order to be as healthy as possible. And as I'll talk about in a later episode when I talk about dealing with health problems and issues, it is fundamentally important to focus on creating 
an environment of health for your pigeon rather than having to continually medicate to deal with problems. And one of the fundamental pillars of healthy pigeons is a healthy diet. So how do we choose uh, a good food or grit? You need to make sure that you're selecting a mix intended for pigeons, so it will have the right kind of things in it, uh, providing those proteins, carbohydrates and fats in appropriate ratios. I would, however, caution against buying racing pigeon food if you are keeping pigeons as pets indoors. You need to remember that racing pigeons are athletes uh, and therefore they will have much greater energy demands than other pigeons. And therefore racing pigeon food can sometimes be particularly high in carbohydrates or occasionally high in fats for those times of year when the birds need extra energy. Therefore, I would recommend that if you are keeping birds as pets, then that you choose either a general all year round feed suitable for racing or any other sorts of pigeons or a, uh, a mix designed for fancy birds. So therefore birds that don't have huge amount of energetic requirements. In addition to the basic pigeon feed, you might also want to provide uh, additional foods in the form of fresh foods and the occasional treat. So in the wild, pigeons would not only eat, consume uh, peas, grains and seeds, they would also eat quite a fair bit of greens as well. They would peck at grass, they would peck at weeds and other plants. And therefore you can supplement their diet with some fresh greens and vegetables. This will provide them with additional vitamins and minerals, also additional water as well. Uh, and you can look up online a list of bird safe greens uh, that you can supply to your pigeons. So here's a couple of suggestions for you. Uh, carrots, make sure that you chop them up small. Uh, so something to note is that pigeons swallow their food whole. So whatever you provide, be it the, the mix or different types of seeds or the fresh foods, you need to remember that they're going to swallow them whole. And therefore seeds uh, need to be shelled. So something like sunflower hearts, for example, you don't want to provide those in the shell. Pigeons are unable to remove the shell and it's quite thick and difficult to digest. Uh, also things like peanuts as well, you want to provide them shelled and definitely uh, nothing including any added salt. Uh, so your veg and your greens also need to be chopped up fairly small uh, so that your pigeons can swallow the pieces whole. So in addition to something like carrot or other vegetables, you might also want to provide uh, lettuce greens as well. You can take a bunch of these and perhaps peg them to the bars of the cage. Uh, the pigeons will need something to anchor uh, the leaves too because they, they have to pull and rip small pieces off so they need something to pull against. Uh, also you can give them uh, the celery tops, so the, the leaves from celery or even the celery itself uh, chopped up small. When giving new foods to your pigeon, you need to be patient and persistent. Pigeons are naturally quite suspicious of new food and things that they're not familiar with. So it might take several, several attempts of offering them new food uh, before they will start to take it. But certainly if you've got multiple birds and you've got one bird uh, that will uh, eat the food that you're giving them, other pigeons will follow uh, their lead. They, they tend to follow other birds that they see uh, eating things as well. So that's how they learn. In addition to giving fresh greens for additional vitamins and water, you can also give treats. Now, treats should never come in the form of human food. Um, you shouldn't be giving them bread or biscuits or pasta or, or anything involving dairy, sugar or, or anything like that at all. The best diet that you can give your pigeon is a diet that is uh, as natural as possible to what they would find in the wild. But you can still give them treats. You can still give them things that you will enjoy. And most fatty seeds uh, will be particularly enjoyed uh, by pigeons. Things like peanuts, things like sa uh, sunflower hearts, or even smaller ones like hemp or millet or safflower. These should be given sparing amounts, perhaps only one or two times a week, um, because they are high in fat and they shouldn't become a mainstay of the diet 
birds that receive too many oily seeds as part of their diet can develop problems with their liver uh, so it is important to give them to them sparingly and to treat them as treat foods um, and once your birds uh, develop a, a taste for some of these treat foods they'll certainly get rather excited uh, when you bring them out especially if they start to recognize the container that you keep them in and pigeons have great visual memories and they almost certainly will do that in addition to providing them food, greens and treats, you also need to provide them with grit. And this is for both genders at all times. So here's a, here's a dish of grit here. Um, it's important that the grit is of an appropriate grade. So something like chicken grit is possibly a little too coarse. You might want to get something a little finer than that. Uh, and as well as grit, the grit should contain oyster shell or some other form of calcium providing substance. Um, calcium is really important uh, for pigeons. It's, it's important for their bone structure, but it's also especially important for hens uh, because when they're producing eggs in their bodies, they actually draw the calcium that they need to build the shells for those eggs, first and foremost from their bones. And then this is supplemented by the calcium that they take in their diet. But birds don't just need calcium and grit uh, for their bones and for the production of eggs. They also need it to grind up their food. So as I mentioned earlier, pigeons swallow their food whole. They don't have teeth. They can't chew. And the, the shells of seeds and things like that are quite tough. And therefore, they need the physical presence of grit inside their gizzards to act as a grinding mechanism to help with their digestion. So the birds will peck at the grit, they'll swallow it and it'll sit in the gizzard and it will act as a, as a grinding agent to help them grind up their food. And as that grit is gradually broken down by their bodies, releasing the calcium into their system, they'll take more grit in order to supplement that. But in addition to grit and calcium, it's absolutely important to provide your birds with vitamin D as well. The two have to go together. Vitamin D is what allows the bird's body to be able to absorb the calcium in the first place. And therefore, in addition to the calcium, the birds also need to be receiving vitamin D. And there's a couple of ways in which they can get this. So birds that live out of doors in knavery will receive vitamin D naturally from sunlight living out of doors but if your bird lives indoors and you're keeping it as a pet then you need to provide this as a supplement as part of their diet now many calcium plus vitamin d supplements are available in liquid form i use a liquid form for my birds there are various different brands out there and i don't advocate any particular one uh, I happen to be using uh, this one uh, at the moment, which is which is actually designed for poultry uh, rather than pigeons. Um, and it comes in a liquid form and it's put into the water uh, once a week. I have a small dosing syringe uh, that I use to measure it out uh, to make sure that I get the right quantity of water and I just measure the water out in a jug. Uh, to make sure that I get the right uh, dose to give to my birds. So absolutely essential, especially for hens, to give calcium and vitamin D, not just in the physical form in the grit, but also in a supplementary form as well in their water, unless your birds live outdoors and are getting free access to grit from the ground and sunlight in order to get all of that vitamin D. Don't give a cuttle bone to the pigeons. This is something that you'd normally give to a, to a hook-bill cage bird. Pigeons have soft beaks. Uh, they would be unable uh, to get their calcium from gnawing on a cuttle bone. Uh, so this is why we provide it in grit form uh, that they can swallow whole. In addition to providing them with a good diet, 
You also might want to give them a supplement as well with general vitamins and minerals. So the diet that we provide whilst replicating the natural diet doesn't necessarily uh, cover all the vitamins and minerals that they need or it will provide them in sufficient quantities. And therefore, to promote good health amongst your birds, you might want to supplement a good basic diet uh, with some additional vitamins and minerals. And there are different products out there uh, that you can obtain that are suitable for pigeons uh, to supplement your bird's diet. Some of them come in forms that you mix with drinking water. Some of them might come uh, in forms that you uh, put in a pot on their own. So pick pots, for example, where, where pigeons can actually pick at them in a powder form and consume the minerals directly. Or they might come in a form that you mix with the food. I myself uh, use this one which is specifically designed uh, for pigeons. It comes in a reddish powder form and you mix it with the food uh, so that as the pigeons are consuming the foods, it has a fine coating of the powder supplement on it so that they're getting their minerals at the same time. Slight downside to this particular one is that it's quite a strong colour uh, and when the pigeons flick their food about, they tend to get a, a kind of pinky orange staining um, down the front. Uh, so when I finish this one up, I'll, I'll probably give something else uh, a try. Uh, and certainly when it comes to all of these different uh, vitamins and mineral supplements, do give different products a try. Um, obviously products which are specifically designed and marketed for pigeons are the most appropriate. But actually there are other supplements out there that are designed for other birds um, or even poultry uh, that might also be appropriate for pigeons too. Uh, the only word of caution I would say about buying products for poultry is sometimes they tend to come in very large quantities. Uh, so if you're only keeping one or two birds, uh, then it's going to take you a long time to get through the product and it may have gone out of date uh, before you finish it. And I certainly recommend that you don't use any product that is out of date, not necessarily because it's become dangerous, but it will almost certainly be less effective as a supplement if you're using it when it's old. In addition to a good diet and some supplements and grit and calcium, you could also consider giving your birds prebiotics as well. So prebiotics are um, feed supplements that contain a good digestive bacteria, which uh, will go into the bird's gut and help promote good digestion. But in addition to good gut bacteria, prebiotics also contain uh, things like electrolytes and maybe some vitamins and minerals as well. So they're quite good if your bird is sick or perhaps recovering from sickness, especially after they've had antibiotics, uh, which will kill off not only bad bacteria, but also good bacteria too. Also birds that are just generally recovering from illness or a little bit on the low side, um, prebiotics is something that can just give them a little bit uh, of a boost when you're trying to get them better. Um, I've used a couple of uh, different products. Um, I used uh, this one, uh, Avipro Plus, for quite a while. I like that one because uh, you can give it to the birds every day as a general health supplement, or you can mix it up at a stronger concentration for when birds are sick or, or recovering or they've had antibiotics. So it's multi-purpose in that sense. Uh, I've just started using uh, a new uh, prebiotic product, this one, this one's slightly different, you can't give it every day, you give it a couple of times a week, but you do also give it to birds that are convalescing as well, so I'm going to give that one uh, a try. There are natural alternatives to prebiotics, some people use um, apple cider vinegar mixed up at the rate of about five millilitres to one litre. It acts similarly to prebiotics in that it tries to promote the right kind of gut health environment. It doesn't necessarily contain all of the same things that a, that a specific uh, prebiotic product will, um, but lots of fanciers swear by it, uh, and it is certainly a, a cheap, widely available uh, and I do recommend that if you are using apple cider vinegar, that you do use organic, only organic apple cider vinegar uh, mixed with your water. 
So next we move on to the feeding regime. How much to feed and how often? Well, first and foremost, when it comes to the water, the water should be changed daily or if it becomes contaminated in some way, your birds should always have fresh water. Now, generally tap water is okay, um, although it, uh, it might depend on the quality of the tap water in the country where you live. Um, but you, instead of tap water, you could filter that tap water and use filtered water instead. It's not really necessary to give your birds bottled or mineral water. Filtered water is generally okay. And at the time that you give the water, make sure that you're mixing in any supplements that you're giving with the water in the right quantities in accordance with the product instructions. Make sure that your water containers um, and this is something I mentioned in the previous episode about feeding equipment. Make sure that your water container is something that's nice and deep, not too lightweight so it's going to flip over. And that it's positioned such that the bird can place their head downwards, uh, submerse their beak and suck or draw the water up. Uh, certainly you don't want anything that's placed higher than the pigeon's head uh, or level with the pigeon's head because they won't be able uh, to drink from it properly. When it comes to food, there's a couple of different approaches you can take to giving the food. You can either provide the food on tap, which means they always have a full bowl all of the time, or you can ration it into meals. And there's a number of different schools of thought on this, which is if you ration it into meals, then the birds will associate you uh, with providing them food at certain times. Uh, and therefore they will associate you positively with food and therefore when it comes to building that relationship with the bird influencing their behavior and maybe even engaging in any sort of training them associating you with food at specific times is something that you can positively use to influence and interact with them also if you've got birds that are quite large breeds that are potentially prone to overeating or gaining too much weight or too quickly, uh, rationing their food into meals is a way that you can control their weight and ensure that they don't become too heavy or obese. The other school of thought is, is providing a constant supply of food all of the time. And if you do this, then obviously it means that your bird will have access to food at any time of the day. But it also means that you won't necessarily be able to monitor how much that they're eating. And therefore, if you are choosing to feed this way, there is a lesser chance that you'll be able to use food as a means to control or uh, train your bird. Uh, but also potentially that they could be putting on additional weight if they're consuming too much for their size. I mentioned in the previous episode that about having some kitchen scales and monitoring your bird's weight regularly is something that you should do in order to make sure that their weight is remaining in a healthy range uh, for their breed. So how much should you feed your pigeon? Well, the average individual pigeon of an average size will consume around 35 to 45 grams of food a day. A large breed will consume more. Maybe a small dove will consume less than that. So it's important for you to understand and to research what an appropriate amount of food is for the particular type of pigeon that you've got. Uh, and to make sure that you understand how much you should be giving and to keep an eye on the bird's weight to make sure that it's remaining relatively stable and in a healthy range. And that will be a great indicator as to whether you're feeding the right amount of food or not. I myself uh, feed my two different birds differently. So my hen, I feed her with two rationed meals a day. She's a little bit smaller, she's a little bit lighter. Uh, she's also more muscular and more active. Whereas my other bird, um, he's relatively new. I've only had him about three months. He was not used to a meal-based feeding regime before. Uh, so we started him off on a constant supply of food, although he is gradually transitioning uh, to defined meals and his weight has stabilized. When it comes to grit, you should supply a dish of grit that is available all the time for the bird to consume at any time that they want. Make sure you're keeping an eye on it and topping it up uh, if it needs to be topping it up. Also making sure that the dish is remaining clean and it's not getting contaminated with any 
food or, or water or poop, uh, for example, and just make sure that that's uh, available to them whenever they need it. One of the things you should do uh, when it comes to monitoring your, your bird's uh, food and how much they're eating and, and whether they're doing well is to keep an eye uh, on, on the food bowl. Some people get a little bit worried when they find that their birds are not eating all of their food or not eating certain parts in their food or getting quite picky. Whilst pigeons can get picky over certain types of food, and that's one of the reasons why I recommend trying different brands and mixes of uh, food to make sure your pigeon doesn't start to favour any particular one, their food preferences and needs will change throughout the year. And although birds kept indoors are a little less prone uh, to seasonal influence than those that live outside, there, there are times of the year when they will focus their feeding on different things. So for example, during the winter, when they need more energy to keep them warm, they will generally eat more grain and more seeds, which provide them with more carbohydrates and more energy, and they might ease back on eating the peas. So you may find that they're leaving more peas in their bowl. Similarly, in the spring and summer, when perhaps their breeding hormones get going, you may find that they eat less of the grain and less of the seeds because they don't need as much energy to keep them warm because they're getting that uh, from the fact that it's a warm time of the year. And they'll need the protein uh, in order to fuel uh, the growth, the breeding, and all of those things that they're doing in spring and summer. So it's not necessarily something that you should worry about if you, they start to leave different types of foods at different times of the year. The most important thing is that they're looking healthy, that they're looking well, and their weight is remaining stable. And I generally trust my birds to know what they need to eat and when they need to eat it, as long as I'm providing them with a balanced diet that's covering all the nutritional bases that I mentioned earlier. When it comes to giving the treats, you can give them one or two times a week, maybe a small handful, uh, for an individual bird, you not it's not something that you want your birds to get used to having all of the time. You want them to be excited about it. Um, I generally give a hemp seed to my birds once a week. They get, get a little handful each um, and they recognise the container that I keep it in. So as soon as I bring it out, they're generally quite excited about it. Also with the greens and the fresh vegetables, again, you can give these a couple of times a week. You must make sure though, uh, that once the birds have had their fill, that you do take those uh, dishes away. Fresh food spoils very quickly. It could potentially go moldy, it could potentially be targeted by insects. Therefore, you need to make sure that you're clearing that away. Whereas the dry seed food uh, is something that you need to worry about a little less. When it comes to storage of the dry seed food, Make sure that you're storing it in a clean, dry container, ideally with a lid. Uh, I keep uh, my bird food in a, in, a, in a plastic box here. Um, you need to make sure every now and then that you're just checking it, that it's, that it's still dry, that there's no dampness in there, that there's no mold forming, um, and that there's no uh, insects, weevils, or, or anything else inside there. Obviously dispose of any food completely that becomes uh, contaminated, especially if it's mouldy. Uh, so do keep an eye on that whenever you're dispensing the food to make sure that it's remaining in a clean and safe condition uh, for your birds. So there you go, I've covered quite a bit about feeding and nutrition there. I've talked about the basic dietary needs, the three main macronutrient food groups for pigeons and doves, which are proteins in the form of peas, carbohydrates in the form of grains, and fats in the form of seeds, uh, and also how you can supplement this diet with vitamins and minerals, especially calcium plus vitamin D. I talked about how to choose food and grit and the things that you need to bear in mind when selecting uh, what to give uh, your pigeon, including things like treats and fresh greens and also prebiotics to supplement that digestion, vitamins and minerals and calcium as well. 
I've talked about the feeding regime, how much to give, how often, different ways you can feed and the importance of monitoring your bird's weight uh, and condition to make sure that they're remaining healthy. I hope that's been useful to you. Uh, make sure that you keep following my series uh, if you want to find more uh, about keeping pigeons as pets. I hope to see you in the next episode soon. Please remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell to make sure that you don't miss any of my future videos. Uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.